In this video, we're going to have a look at massage for plantar heel pain or for plantar fasciopathy, plantar fasciitis, whatever you wish to call it. So here's a series of techniques you can do to help reduce pain from the plantar fascia. You can start with your hand, and I like to use the back of my fingers there, making a soft fist, so not a firm fist, but a fist with your fingers are out. And the reason is there, your knuckles are more supple, so you can then pass through the tissue without it being too painful an experience for the patient. Okay, so I'm starting from the front of the foot and then slowly working through that longitudinal arch and then up over the heel as well. Okay. If I then use my other hand to hold the foot in a slight stretch position, okay. that can also be beneficial as I move through the foot. Not just going through the medial longitudinal arch, but also coming along the lateral side of the foot as well. So no surprises there, a nice simple massage application with the foot either in a relaxed position or holding the foot into a slightly passively flexed position as well. You can try some direct pressure over the tender points on the foot. This is very variable and I find lots of patients find this too uncomfortable, but I have a handful of patients that find this kind of focal sustained pressure helpful for reducing their symptoms. It's not a cure, but it's something which can help. And if you're having a consultation with a patient and you've gone through uh, footwear and orthotics and loading and stretching, all the different things that can help a patient, then a bit of massage whilst you're discussing the management and during the consultation can often be greatly appreciated by the patient. Because the plantar fascia has that continuity with the Achilles tendon and gastrox, if you do have time, I would recommend also massaging through the gastrosoleus complex as well. Massaging this region can be beneficial at generally reducing tension. So if you're working on this area to reduce pain and you've got time, migrate your treatment down through onto the gastrosoleus complex. When working on the plantar fascia, this is also an ideal place to use a massage tool, especially if you don't want to get too close and in contact with your patient's feet. And obviously these feet I've got here are lovely feet, but I'm sure you've all seen feet that you might hesitate about putting your hands on too, which is where a massage tool can come in and be very helpful as well. Be careful not to apply too much pressure. It's very easy to use the metal tool to put too much pressure through the plantar fascia. And I hope I'm not doing that now because the patient's not shouting at me. Once again, migrate your treatment down onto the connected soft tissue because this can also be helpful. And remember, this is part of the superficial back line that we looked at during some of the earlier lectures. So if you have time, add in that gastrosoleus massage as well. Right, now on the screen here, I'm gonna show you some other massage options for the plantar fascia. Using a ball under the sole of the foot is a great way for the patient to self-massage. What a lot of patients find helpful is a bottle of frozen water because they have the, the cooling effect and the analgesia associated with that, as well as a nice firm surface to roll on. So a frozen bottle of water has become quite popular recently as a way of reducing pain from the plantar fascia. In this video, we're going to have a look at massage when the patient is suffering from upper hamstring tendinopathy. Now, there does exist a deep transverse friction technique for the origin of the upper hamstrings where you directly rub over the region. But generally, this is not a nice experience for patients. And physically, if you go and irritate the tendon directly, especially for a reactive tendinopathy, you're likely to further irritate the tissue. So I generally advise not to perform deep transverse frictions on tendinopathies to avoid further irritation. You can, however, massage the neighboring muscle, which is the theme of all of the massage techniques that we're looking at here. So for upper hamstring tendinopathy, clearly you're gonna massage the connecting contractile tissue here, the hamstring muscles, which are of course are a, a nice large area to massage, nice long muscles, and very easy to perform massage treatments on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of emollient onto our model's leg here. Now, if you're a massage therapist, uh, any massage techniques that you wish to perform on the hamstrings are likely to be, to be helpful. I'm gonna start by bending the knee just to relax the tissue a little bit here, then using my other hand just to put some simple friction techniques 
up through the hamstring tissue. And what we're trying to do is generally desensitize the hamstring tissue, reduce muscle tone, and this should hopefully reduce some of the upper hamstring tendinopathy symptoms as well. It's certainly worth a try if the patient's come in to see you in your clinic and you've gone through all of the other important information that we've covered for this particular condition and you wish to use some of the remaining clinical time to offer some pain relief, even if transient. And also this is a great opportunity to continue discussions with the patient to find out what sort of training they've been doing, to find out about their loading program and to impart some of that important information for generally managing and treating the condition. To benefit yourself and to save wearing out your hands, I like to sometimes use my forearm as well. It allows you to sweep over the area covering a large surface area for fairly minimal effort. And with the other techniques, of course, I've been using the massage tool and there's no reason why you can't use it over the hamstrings as well. If you wish to perform some light stretching of the hamstrings at the same time as massaging, then that can also be advantageous for the patient and may help to reduce some of their symptoms. Let's have a look at massage for gluteal tendinopathy. As with the other tendons, I've advised to avoid rubbing over the sore area directly, but with gluteal tendinopathies, plenty of contractile tissue attached and that influences a condition that we can easily treat with some massage techniques. And this can offer some relief, particularly of the gluteal muscles, which I find once treated, even for a short duration of time, say 30 seconds to a minute, can offer some significant pain relief. And even if that's transient, it can be very beneficial for the patient and give them a boost to start your planned management. Just a quick tip guys, when you're doing your gluteal tendinopathy treatments, as we've discussed in the earlier lectures for the gluteal tendinopathy condition, the hip often doesn't like being in this adducted position because it puts stress on the lateral hip structures. So if the patient's finding lying in this position uncomfortable whilst you deliver some soft tissue treatments, the advice, of course, is to pop a pillow between the knees, advice that you would have already or will soon be giving to your patient to do when they're lying in bed or lying on their side sunbathing, for example. A pillow between the knees puts the hip into a more neutral position and takes the stress off those lateral structures and can just be a simple way of reducing symptoms for the patient. So for the gluteal tendinopathy, which often involves the gluteus medius and minimus, we can start by working on the gluteal tissue posterior to the greater trochanter, whilst avoiding pressing directly over the tendon as it attaches onto the greater trochanter. And to avoid that, you just come more posterior and work into the fleshy tissue over the glutes. So you can start by having a press around in there with your thumbs to identify any tender areas. And your thumbs are gonna get pretty worn out quickly if you're using them too much into the large gluteal region. So I would advise using more of a blunt tool to save your own joints. You may decide to use uh, a, a closed soft fist in order to get in there and to do some twisting and kneading, which can be beneficial. If the patient doesn't mind getting into a state of undress, then you can work through the tissues with standard massage techniques. But because I often do this on elderly clients, uh, not that they wouldn't necessarily get unchanged, but it just can take an awful amount of time sometimes for elderly clients to uh, remove their multiple layers. So I tend to do the treatments through the clothing. And when I was teaching in London recently, I took along one of the tools that I use in practice quite a lot, one of the vibration massage tools, which I'll put up on the screen now. And there are various options available for vibration massage tools, but I like to use this one in clinic. It's a mains powered tool and it can work very nicely and very quickly through clothing. So it's a very effective and efficient tool to use in practice for massage techniques. Um, you can also use your elbow as well, but go easy with this because you can certainly find some tender points and you wanna be careful not to put too much body weight through there, otherwise it can be particularly uh, sore for the patient. So spend some time on the gluteal tissue there, which is really gonna be very helpful for reducing symptoms. But don't forget, we've also got the TFL, the tensor fasciae lata. Just come off the anterior superior iliac crest there. 
and drop down and find the thin slender muscle belly of the TFL and if that's an area of tenderness then working on that with some soft tissue techniques can be helpful. So you may be able to identify that and even work on that with your fingers. Again, with your thumbs, being careful with your thumbs, but because it's a smaller band of tissue, you want to be careful rather than just sort of jabbing it with your elbow, which is an option, but if you're not careful, you can't overload the tissue and push a bit too hard on what's effectively a more delicate region than the glutes. So have a feel there and do some work on the TFL if necessary. To do some more global techniques that can be helpful with the gluteal tendinopathy, as we discussed in earlier lectures, this can refer down the lateral thigh as well. So performing some soft tissue techniques down the lateral thigh can be beneficial. Once you've done your work up here in the more central region of the condition, bring your treatment out down the lateral thigh. Now you can go over the ITB if you like, but that can often be uncomfortable and in my opinion, unnecessarily uncomfortable. It makes more sense to go over the contractile tissue. So that would be the bicep femoris on the posterior lateral side or the vastus lateralis on the anterior lateral side there. So moving down over those regions there can be helpful. Coming down just off the back of the ITB for the bicep femoris, or coming down over the anterior part of the ITB for the vastus lateralis. Working on those tissues can be beneficial for your patient. With hip issues, it's also common to have some compensation from the lumbar spine, in particular from the QLs, the quadratus lumborum. So having a feel around and identifying any tender points around here, and then of course delivering some soft tissue treatment to this region can be beneficial for your hip pain patients, of course for your gluteal tendinopathy patients. So if I identified that the QL was tender on the right side here for this patient, it would be helpful to open up this side a little bit just to give me a bit more space to perform the soft tissue work. And that can easily be achieved by adding in some side flexion of the torso just to open up this lower lateral lumbar region. From there, I can then apply some massage techniques through this area. And this simple technique I'm using here, I'm just using the base of my palm, so the thenar and the hypothenar eminence there, keeping the rest of my palm and my fingers out, holding my wrist into extension and just applying some pressure down over this region. So I've got a nice, soft, wide surface area that I'm using, and this tends to work well over the QL area. You can also use a soft fist, again, with your fingers out, not held in a firm fist, and you can move down over like so. It may also be an option to find any focal points of tenderness and apply some direct, sustained pressure to get some desensitization over the region as well. Okay guys, now it's your turn to give it a go. For adductor tendinopathy, this pathology can often benefit from massage of the adductors, unsurprisingly. So this is a good position to place your patient so you can get access to the adductors. So in this case, the adductors of the left leg. And it puts the adductors in a nice exposed position there. And you can pull the shorts up to the desired level. So the area that you're going to work on is clearly presented in front of you and the clothing is out the way. And then you can apply your standard massage techniques now, depending on your training or your style of massage, it doesn't really matter as long as you perform your massage techniques over the adductors that are connected to the adductor tendinopathy, this is likely to be beneficial for reducing the symptoms for the patient. If you do have time during your clinical session, then also include massage of the surrounding musculature, including the quadriceps and the hamstrings as well, as this can be beneficial for adductor problems. As we discussed on the course regarding adductor tendinopathy, it's often helpful to work on the mobility of the tissues around the core as well. So if they've got tension in their lower back, then you're gonna look at mobilizing the lumbar spine. But again, when you're doing your massage treatments, it would be beneficial to massage the lumbar spine if it increases their mobility and extensibility as well. So any work you can do around the core to improve their flexibility, mobility, then that will be beneficial for the adductors. So focus on the adductor muscles and then migrate your treatment to the quadriceps, hamstrings, and then up to the lower back if that's an area where there is a little bit of stiffness and immobility. 
Another patient position for massaging the adductors is with the patient lying supine, simply bend the knee up and then let the hip drop out into a little bit of abduction and just place it resting on your torso there so that the patient can relax. And then you've got the adductors right in front of you for you to easily perform some massage techniques. If the patient does feel exposed, the correct placement of a towel, of course, which you would have been taught on your massage course, can be placed here to provide a physical barrier. In this video, I want to offer some advanced massage techniques which you can use when treating all of the tendon problems that we've just looked at. So if we take the hamstrings as an example, I can show you the pin and stretch technique which you can use for any of the other musculatures connected to the tendinopathies as well. But I'm just gonna give you an example here on the hamstring muscle. So I've bent the knee up there to relax the hamstring tissue. I'm then going to apply some pressure over the posterior lateral hamstrings. And I'm gonna bring that up just up above the point of any potential tension. And from there, I'm gonna hold that position and then start to extend the knee. So this is the pin and stretch position. As I'm coming up through the tissue, pinning the tissue, and then effectively stretching the tissue below, bringing the knee down into extension. Now there's not much hamstring stretch going on here, but what I'm doing is I'm using the movement of the knee to effectively produce a shear force underneath my left hand as the knee extends. So I've got what begins as a superficial external massage, followed by a deeper internal massage of the tissues. And you can apply that technique to the other musculature for other tendons as well. Next, we'll have a look at stimulating muscle tissue, which you can do with topotement techniques. Now, the idea here is that we're not looking to reduce the tone as you would do with many other types of massage treatment. This is where we're looking to actually stimulate upregulate and induce some mechano stimulation. And this can be very useful before a rehabilitation session where you're looking for muscle stimulation, especially if there's been some deficit in the muscle contraction as well. So when you're looking to stimulate muscles, we can do the following topotement techniques. One of my favorites is the chopping, which as described is like doing lots of little karate chops over the tissue. If you're a massage therapist, I'm sure you're very familiar with these types of technique. This is the type of technique that you would do perhaps in the latter stages of rehabilitation. However, you would be surprised because often doing these types of technique during an acute tendinopathy can actually reduce tendon pain as well. Slightly goes against the grain of perhaps what you've been taught, but as long as you're not chopping and hammering over the tendon, you're not gonna do any harm to a tendinopathy even if it is an acute tendinopathy. And if you're working over the muscles here with your chopping techniques, it's likely to help with the tendon function as well. And that may be because you're stimulating the muscles and in the improved muscle function is helping to improve the general function and therefore reduce the pain from the tendon. So you can use it for your stimulation upregulation, but you might like to try it even in the acute stages. Just don't chop over the tendon. Massage forms a small but important part of successful tendinopathy management and treatment. The techniques we have looked at predominantly focus on the adjoining muscle groups for each tendon. To expand this idea of myofascial continuity, many therapists have reported the benefits of performing soft tissue work along the length of the myofascial continuities, rather than maintaining the massage near the tendon. An example of this for gluteal tendinopathy would be to massage the lateral line of tissue or to massage the whole back line for an Achilles or hamstring tendon problem, for example. Massage is one of the oldest treatment modalities with a proven anecdotal track record. Its ability to produce pain from a variety of causes is well documented. Based on what we currently know, massage can confidently be used as an analgesic tool for tendinopathy related pain. And I believe that a positive outcome from massage can improve patient rapport and exercise adherence.